Welcome to episode three of our Job Hunters series, where I'm giving you tips on the different skills and capabilities that you need in order to create the right documents and create the right mindset and train yourself up to show up at an interview or in representing yourself to get the job that you want. So far, we have done two episodes. The episode one focused on writing your resume and episode two focused on when you get a call to an interview, how do you prepare for that interview? The order in which I developed the series was intentional in that I wanted to give enough time to people who were watching to begin crafting or begin judging up their resume for a couple of weeks before we got to episode four, which would be how to really polish up your presence. So how to present yourself in writing as well as in person. So we'll be talking about that next week. This week for episode three, we are focusing on writing your cover letter. Now, depending on where you are applying, a cover letter is no longer always necessary. Some more advanced companies, I would say, have done away with the need for a cover letter because they say, send in your information via your profile, for example, on LinkedIn. And so some people screen you on LinkedIn by looking at your professional profile and by looking at your projects and everything that you have done as doc documented on LinkedIn. And then they will decide on who they want to offer uh, an interview to or to do a shortlist for. Some companies just say, you know what, we don't use the cover letter when people attach it. So the instruction when they put out a job vacancy posting is just send us your resume. Um, however, the majority of, of companies still ask for a cover letter. Whether they use it all that much is debatable in my opinion because I have talked to many friends who are recruiters, HR managers, um, and top managers, and they say that they usually skim that first cover page or really flip the page and look at the resume, rip the cover page off, they toss it in the bin, and the resume is what they retain and put on file. Nevertheless, if you are doing an application, Typically, you write a, a cover letter, and we call it a cover letter because it is a letter introducing you, and it covers the resume. In other words, it's the first thing that the um, interviewer or the screener or the gatekeeper sees, and that is supposed to present who you are and let them make a very snap judgment on whether this person looks like a potential candidate or not. So there are do's and don'ts that you need to bear in mind. If your cover letter is my first impression of you, then your cover letter is akin to the way they say it takes three seconds for somebody to make a judgment when they see your face. Your cover letter is your face in the application process. And so you better come good with your cover letter. So how do you do that? If you think that fancifying the paper is going to give you an edge, think again. Hmm. Use simple paper, use professional fonts, use simple colors. If you are going to use multiple colors, consider only one more color. So for example, you want your cover letter to come across as professional and polished. Don't scatter the colors of the rainbow throughout your whole resume, unless you're an artist or creative, and then 
all rules disappear because your creativity gets to be highlighted in the way you present yourself. But for everybody else, we need to come across as professional. We need to come across as clear, as good communicators, and we need to be formal. So if you were getting a letter from a professional institution, that letter would come to you and it would most likely have a letterhead on top. And then it would start with certain salutations and so on, right? So you have to do the same. If you don't develop a letterhead for yourself, some people do, some people don't. If you don't develop a letterhead for yourself, then you want to start with your address and the date. Then you skip a line and you write the address of the addressee, which is the person you are writing your letter to. So it would be, let's say that it was somebody named Lyndon Johnson, Mr. Lyndon Johnson, next line, HR manager, next line, XYZ Bank, next line, Shaguanas, next line, Trinidad and Tobago. Right? Now, if you're writing from Trinidad and Tobago to Trinidad and Tobago, you can take the line Trinidad and Tobago out. Okay? So that's the person's name, job title, postal address. And then you skip a line again and you write, Dear Mr. Johnson. If you are applying based on a vacancy, you check who you are supposed to apply to and you use that as the addressee for your letter. If it just says apply to HR, this is your opportunity to not be lazy and just write to whom it may concern. So you would research who is the HR head at company XYZ. You would discover on the website, it's Mr. Lyndon Johnson, or you would make a phone call to company XYZ, talk to the executive assistant who answers, and say, I'm putting in an application and I would like to know the name of the HR manager so I can address it appropriately. Good? So you write the person's name correctly, make sure you get the Mr. or Miss correctly. For example, names like Chris, Ashley, et cetera, are actually unisex names. I know both men and women with those names. Sometimes people write the wrong salutation, they write Miss Ashley so-and-so when in fact it's Mr. Ashley, okay? So make sure you find out the gender, make sure you find out if they have any other titles behind their names. Is it um, ENG, engineer so-and-so instead of Mr. so-and-so? Is it doctor something? Is it... Um, MBBS behind, find out what the, the other um, titles are that you need to include in this person's name. And then when you are writing there, you would write there, Mr. So-and-so. You would not write to whom it would, it, it may concern, okay? If you don't know and you can't find out, of course, write to whom it may concern, skip another line, there, sir, or madam. Sounds a little dated, but that is the formal way to write, so do it properly, okay? This is not the time to feel like you feel uncomfortable to write a certain way and therefore you're not going to do it. You do not write hello. Don't write, hello, I am so, 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 and continue your letter. This is a formal letter, make sure you write formally, okay? So dare, Mr. Johnson. Now, typically, there's a particular way that we handle um, punctuation when we write letters. Once upon a time, we used to put certain addresses and so on to the right of the page. That was 20, 30 years ago. Now everything is left justified. And now, most times, people leave punctuation off. So if I'm writing my um, address or their address, I don't put commas after every line. 
I leave it unpunctuated and I just go to the next line. Um, so you can look at formats for letters and look for the format for a formal interview letter, a formal cover letter or formal application letter. And when we write dear sir or madam, you could write dear sir slash madam, M-A-D-A-M. Some people write a colon, but if you're doing the no, um, no punctuation pattern, then you don't punctuate. You, don't, you just write dear sir, sir slash madam and you leave it unpunctuated and you go to the next line and you begin, skip a line and you begin your next paragraph, your first paragraph. What do we write in our paragraphs? So the first paragraph is where you identify what you are writing for. So yes, you can write, dear sir slash madam, I hereby apply for consideration as a job title at your company or at company name. However, it makes sense for you to identify where you learned of this vacancy. So, dear sir or madam, in response to your job vacancy posted on CaribbeanJobs.com, in response to your job vacancy posted on Monster.com, in response to your job vacancy posted on, and you name the place that you've heard of it, on the um, daily newspaper name, dated so, 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 right? The daily newspaper of this date, I hereby apply for consideration as a job title at your company, right? Um, I hold a degree in a BSc so, um, management, management studies degree, um, bracket upper second class or whatever, and I graduated in 2019. And that tells you in a nutshell, I, I want this job, this is how I learned about this job, and I have the basic qualifications that you have asked for in this job, first paragraph. So if they only scan that first paragraph, that ticks a box and they say, okay, good, this person meets the basic requirements for this job, we could toss them in the consider pile. Or they've wet my interest and I will continue reading that cover letter. So then the next paragraph is going to tell them what I have that makes me a person that they need, what I have that's going to draw them in, right? So my cover letter is a fishing letter. It's trying to hook them. And I hook them by showing them why I glow. So how do I show them that I'm the right person? Well, the job vacancy tells me a lot about what they want. So I have to go into the job vacancy and I have to identify the attitudes, skills, and knowledge that they want. And I have to find a way, without writing 10 paragraphs, I have to find a way to to identify the main three or four things that they really need and that may be really important and not so easy to get to and, and write that in the cover letter. I have two years of experience assisting with development of strategic management um, action plans or strategic management plans. Um, with, with a CEO at a medium-sized manufacturing company. And if the job is to help them with business development, that just might make them say, ah, this is interesting. I have traveled to five countries in the last two years to assist with improvement of X, Y, and Z together with the business development unit of our international base. I have done audits of operations management departments across 20 sites in the Caribbean in the last five years. 
if they're looking for an operations auditor or if they're looking for an operations manager or if they're looking for an operations assistant, those things become very, very interesting to them because it says, oh, this person has experience. So your cover letter really makes that shine, right? You also want to talk about your experience as a team leader, as a team member, as a project manager, as a coordinator of things. We want to talk about your skills with technology. What are the technology skills that the company may need in the job that you want? Which of those skills do you have? Uh, do you have skills in doing social media posts? How, do you have your own blog? Do you help people to develop something? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Do you have really, really good technical writing skills? You've written procedures and you've created um, worksheets and analysis documents that help people to capture their progress as they, as they walk through um, audits or as they walk through analyses of systems. If so, you want to highlight those things because not everybody has those skills. And those make the interviewer pause and say, hmm, I could really use this. In fact, beyond just this job, this person has skills that could help this company. And therefore, even if you are not right for the job you are applying to, and I've seen this happen a few times, you actually might get a, a call saying, we don't think you are right for the job that you have applied for, but we are interested in interviewing you for job ABC. Would you be interested in that one? Because they see that you have a broader kind of base or you have a much more specific technical base and they didn't even advertise a vacancy yet in that one and they think you're right for it. That's an advantage because if they have not advertised and they're offering you the opportunity to be interviewed, chances are you won't be competing against very many people and the opportunity is an easier one to become yours. So consider that as well. Okay, so paragraph one, we tell them what we're applying for and where we learned about it and the very basics of our qualification to open the door to be considered. Paragraph two, we talk more about our knowledge, skills, and attitudes, and our experience, and how that really dovetails well to help us to shine in this job that we've applied for. Paragraph three, we are very interested in working at this company. Let me tell you why. I am a fit because I believe that this company will allow me to do this, that comes in to a minimal extent. And the much bigger extent is, I believe that I can make a difference at this company. And you maybe, maybe give them one idea about something that you think could help in the job, if you are in a position to share that. So don't squeeze out something just because you're trying to force fit um, an idea. If your idea is weak, don't put it. But if it's something that really has fired you up and you think you could make a difference and you're like, wow, I really want this job because if I go there, I have the ability to help them to expand this by using my skills in this. And I have one idea that I would love to share with them in the interview. Then maybe you could even put that. And that may be a hook that says to them, okay, call me to the interview, let me share this. They, 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 they just might do that, right? So we don't want to be gimmicky and we don't want to fool anybody, but we definitely need to shine a light on ourselves and show why we are promising as a candidate. That's what your cover letter does. So the do's for writing your cover letter, be formal, make sure to acknowledge, by name and job title, the person you are applying to, and make sure that your salutation includes their title and name. Make sure that you write formally. Make sure that you cut no corners on writing properly. So proper English, proper grammar, proper paragraphing, proper spelling. 
complete sentences. Biggest, biggest one, spell their name right. Use the right title for them, Mr., Mrs., Dr., Professor, or whatever. Use the right title, spell their name correctly. Um, do not brown nose. So don't suck up to them because that's, you know, too sweet can be sick, 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 sickly sweet. So try not to suck up, but try to be professional. Try to be positive, but not too sappy sweet. Um, the, the don'ts include, don't just write, attach to my resume. I've walked you through what you should be doing, right? Oh, we didn't end that letter yet when I was laying it out. You want to say, I have attached my resume and I am available for an interview at your convenience and to provide any further information that you'd be interested in. If you have somewhere where they could get additional information, if they want, for example, if you have a website, if you have a LinkedIn profile where you have a lot of professional stuff that you want them to be able to see, for example, if you've been making professional posts in the area you're applying to, you want them to see that others are leaning on you to get your guidance. Because that says, oh, this is a professional who others look to for advice. This is a professional who belongs to a network and is respected for their contribution in their field. And that helps your application. So you can say, in addition to my resume, which is attached, you can learn more about the work I do and the service I provide by visiting my website at, and by visiting my LinkedIn profile, see header, right? Or at, and you write it. Um, I am available. Um, by telephone or by email between the hours of what and what, if you want to say hours, or you could say at your convenience, and then you sign off. So we used to see everybody signing off yours truly back in the day. I'm sure when you did primary school, you would have learned to close a letter with yours truly, comma, your name. Um, you, you, you have a little flexibility. You could end it sincerely. You could end it um, with, with regards. So check what you want to end it with, but end it professionally. And you can end it yours truly if you wish. And then you sign your name. If you are sending a cover letter by email, you might be wondering, how do I sign my name? Well, you can actually scan your signature and you can drop it on there and you can save the document as a PDF and submit that. Um, you can also just type your name because the email is the evidence that it's an original submission. The email that you send is dated and tracked. And so some people don't put their signature, but they will just send it by email and note in the email, this is my formal submission. My electronic signature is not attached, given that I'm, I'm sending it by email, which makes it traceable, that kind of thing. And you don't even have to say that, right? So you can investigate, just do a little Google search and investigate whether you feel you should send your signature embedded in the PDF or whether you want to send it unsigned. That's your decision to make, okay? So that cover letter is intended to whet their appetite. That, that cover letter is the hook and you want to be able to reel them in. So you should give enough information for them to say, oh, this person looks like the right fit. Oh, this person looks like they have some of the competencies and experience that we're going to have. Oh, this person communicates very well. Um, and so I'm interested, all right? Do not put a photo on your cover letter. Unless you're a model or you're applying for some job where a headshot is required, but typically we don't put headshots. Anyway, social media will usually allow somebody to search your name and see 
how you look and so on if they want. But formally, you shouldn't say, this is me and judge me based on how I look to decide if I get the job. That's not good HR practice anyway, right? They should not be judging our application based on how we look, unless it is a job that requires my looks to be evaluated. All right. So let me open up the call to those of you who are live. And you all could feel free to ask any questions to get some clarity. Any questions that you all have? Miss, how, um, how lengthy should the cover letter be? Cover letter should not go longer than a page. Remember your resume is just one to two pages, right? So imagine if your cover letter was longer than your resume. Your cover letter is just a little um, introduction to you. Your cover letter is not going to be time and a half or double spaced. It is single spaced and it is concise and clear. And it just presents the basics about you so that they see whether you look like you meet the basics that they have that that they need and whether there are certain things that stand out about you that make you seem to be somebody they would want to shortlist because what goes on at the stage of reading the cover letter is a process called gatekeeping right when we recruit people we have to screen and see which applicants look like they might be appropriate and which applicants look like they may not and the role of gatekeepers often is more about who is not coming through the gate than about who is coming through. It's so easy to screen out and say, ah, no, 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 and you just toss them into the bin. Not this one, not this one, not this one. Ah, this one looks like is a possibility. So that goes in the keep pile, that goes in the potential for shortlisting pile. And then we'll do a deeper review on the ones we've kept. But we only have done a very surface review and 60% have been screened out. And that's the aim in the beginning. So your cover letter needs to make sure to open that door for you and let you through to have the second look, the more detailed look and decide, okay, this might be one of my shortlisted people. Let's invite them to an interview and see where we go next. I have somebody asking something in the chat. I'm trying to get that chat to come up. And unfortunately, it's not coming up. Could you ask the question again? Okay, I'm seeing it. Do you know if banks in particular prefer the cover letter? Definitely. I, um, so by default, your application should have a cover letter. It's only if they say a cover letter is not necessary that, that you could leave it off. But banks are very, very traditional, bureaucratic, institutions and those are the least likely ones to do away with the documents that are traditionally required so if you're applying to banks definitely have your cover letter okay any other questions um just as our resumes are tailored to different jobs that we may apply to we also um, selectively choose information for our co um, cover letters that applies to the job that we want? Yes, because um, remember I told you when you write in the cover letter, you want to look at what they ask for in the vacancy and you want to make sure to spotlight or highlight some of the things that they're asking for and showing that you have that experience, that you have that qualification, that you have that competence, that you have the right attitude, right? You may not list all four things, right? That's far too many, but choose the thing that really will show you in the best light and show your fit with the job in the best light. So yes, your cover letter has to be tweaked and tailored for each job, just like your resume. Right, and when I'm, when I'm talking about tailoring, um, it doesn't mean that you have to do a full rewrite of a resume or a full rewrite of a cover letter, but it does mean that there are certain lines that you are going to have to change. 
Um, the other thing that you must be careful to do or not do <clears throat> is back when I was maybe 19 or 20, I was applying to a job for, I was applying for jobs. And I think I applied for 25 jobs at a time. I was unemployed and I was stressed and I wanted to get the job. And therefore I decided I was going to just send out a million applications in the mail. Here's the challenge. When you write 25 cover letters in an hour, <laughs> all you're doing is you're changing the name of the person that you're sending it to and the job title of the person and whatever is in the front and in the first paragraph that I'm applying for this job at this company. Inevitably, because you're trying to speed edit, you're going to skip one of the names, you're going to misspell something, you're going to write to Carib Brewery that you are looking forward to being, that you're hoping to be considered for a job as an intern at Carib Glass Weeks. If you don't take your time and focus on one thing at a time, inevitably you will make a slip and you will embarrass yourself. And I promise you when the person reads the cover letter and sees that you did not do them the basic, you didn't give them the basic respect of writing to them as themselves, which means that you were just photocopying out, right? You were just fast tracking, copying this, this this uh, a version of the same letter to every company when they see that they're like oh this person isn't particularly care to come to us this person just wants a job and we want somebody who wants to be with us we want somebody whose identity is going to really mesh with us and 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 they know that we are one of the right places for them they've selected and chosen us carefully so unfortunately, I realized after I sent out the mail that I had done that. I had, hadn't done that particular thing. I spelt the man whose name I was writing to, I spelt his name wrong. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, if you can't spell the name right of the person who you're asking to hire you, what do you expect? I expect that my... Um, my resume, my application was in the bin that day when he received it. And I never did get an acknowledgement letter from them because they realized that I was just trying to be efficient, trying not to waste my time in my applications. It's not a waste of time to slow down and do your applications mindfully and thoroughly and give yourself a day between when you write it and when you reread it, because if you give yourself a day and you come back to reread, you are able to spot if you made mistakes. Had I reread my application, I would have seen that I was spelling the man's name wrong. But I didn't reread it because I was so interested in being quick and sending out everything. There's a saying, more haste, less speed. The faster you do everything, the more frantic you are in doing everything, more likely are you to make mistakes and therefore to be less efficient and less effective. So slow down, do it well, make sure you do it right, double check. And then send out something that you know is quality because your application is the representation of you. You're not going to go and meet somebody and shake their hand with your palm, sweaty and slick and shake their hand as if your hand is a limp fish. You're going to look, at, look them in their eye. You're going to smile at them and make eye contact. You're going to tell them it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for meeting me. You're going to have a firm handshake and not break their hand, but a firm handshake and, and let them know that you honestly are pumped to be in front of them. And you're going to do it the best you can because you are an upstanding person. That's what you want represented in those documents that you send in your application. So you better spend a little bit of time and craft it well. All right, 
Any other questions or comments? No, I'm good. All right. So it was a pleasure to have you all here for the third session with me. And next week, we will be drawing this particular series to a close and talking about how you actually present yourself, whether it's on, on a video call, whether it's face-to-face -face, and whether it's on paper as well, because you present yourself in writing as well as through a, a conversation. So we're gonna talk about how you present yourself in terms of looks, in terms of the way you write, um, little tips, little tricks, little niggling things that employers tend to pick up and we want to make sure that you are cued in and you understand that while certain things may be good in our culture, in an informal setting, they have no place when we are having a conversation for an interview. So we'll be talking about some of those things. Make sure to bring your own experiences and your own questions so that we could give you value next week at 12. Until then, have a good week. Bye-bye. Let me just turn the recording off.